Hi, this is the old man talking. Uh, I want to send an open letter to Bob Dylan. Now, I know Bob Dylan and ain't waiting to hear from me. <laughs> he's He's got a brain of his own and he uh, knows how to use it. But, as you know, I'm bipolar, so bipolars get crazy ideas and this is one of my crazy ideas, and I'm going with it. <laughs> I met Bob Dylan the second time he sang at Gertie's Folk City. I wouldn't say I met him, right? I heard him. I saw him. It was a small club. <laughs> it wasn't no, no big stadium. It held maybe uh, 40 people max. I forget what the old sign said. So I was very impressed with him. Not as impressed as I would later be when I saw how you built your career, Bob. At the time, you were very focused. And you, a lot of people at Gertie's and in the folk music scene at that time were kind of drifting along. And yeah, folk music was fun. And they'd do something else some other time. And, but you were focused, you wanted to do something to music. And uh, you knew how to do it. I caught your town hall concert. I heard that wonderful version of Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. And I, what I admired about you most, what I admire about you most, is your ability to survive, to adjust to very difficult situations. Now, when you're 18, 20 years old, suddenly you're a big star, right? Very few people of that age, including myself, would be able to handle it. So many young singers just go off the rails. They're gone, you know. <laughs> but you roughed it out. Sure, you had some hard times. People climbed on your roof. I'm sure they did a lot of other things. Young people all want to be famous singers, but they don't know the price you pay for fame. You do, and you handled it. But I don't want to bore you. I'm 74. I was like 22, 23 when I heard you in the village. Uh, even sat across the table from you once. You and your girl and your uh, girl's girlfriend. But, and I was there when you, late one night when we had a very thin crowd, you said, hey, let's all jump into a taxi and go over and visit Woody. And you always admired Woody. Well, now I'm 74, and you're right 70 or about there. And uh, I know you never believed in polit politics. Uh, you know, one candidate or another or whatever. And you were never really into protest songs. There was a, a strong protest push at Gertie's. And you kind of reflected that. But it wasn't your main theme. But now we're older, you know, sometimes we rethink things, rethink our priorities. My suggestion to you is that you rethink your thought on protest songs. I mean, look what's happening in the world today, Bob. <laughs> Think about Woody Guthrie and his people. How are they being treated? You've got a wonderful way with lyrics. They're memorable. They hit home. It's not just another, oh, you know, dreary old uh, help the poor song. You bring it to life. And uh, I think if you turned your brilliant mind into some of those type of songs today, it would make a big difference for all of us. So, that's my idea. Throw it in the trash if, if you ever watch it. <laughs> well, 
That's it from ZZ Bob 777, the old man, saying goodbye.